we've made so many strides as women in this country, do you believe women are given the respect that they are due? Respect is a word which can be interpreted very broadly. So I will narrow it down. And since it's International Women's yeah. Day and we're dealing with equity and um, parity and so on, I would say that in Trinidad and Tobago, we have come a long way. Our constitution gives men and women equal rights. And therefore, um, I think we are way ahead of many other countries. True. But because we have a constitution which we respect, um, respect, we do find that uh, there must not be complacency. So we don't take it for granted that uh, we are way ahead of many, but still we have a long road to go. Yeah. The load, road is long. I mean, sometimes, mm -hmm. sometimes these, uh, the idea of respect and what we appreciate and enjoy might well be driven by our beliefs, by our religion, by our culture. And if we were to compare ourselves mm -hmm. to somewhere like a Middle Eastern country where the culture is so different, the religion is so different, right. then I think we can get an appreciation for what happens here in Trinidad and Tobago, where mm -hmm. democracy rules. Mm -hmm. And this is, as you say, democracy is a noisy process. You That's get so right. much noise yes. in this country. But mm -hmm. do you think as a population we appreciate, though, the fact that we are you know, entitled, so to speak, and enjoy this equality of treatment between man and woman, at least at the constitutional level? I think that generally we do. And I say generally because there are so many areas still where women are not treated equally. As women, I believe that uh, um, we have 24-hour jobs. Yes. We work eight hours a day in what our respective um, areas of work would be. And then we get home. We are caregiver, we are babysitters, we are cook, we are um, the washerwoman. Yeah. So we keep on working. But you still find that uh, the man does not always appreciate that, right? Yeah. He doesn't appreciate the fact that we are giving our all. And in that regard, we have issues because of that. In the areas where men think they are dominant, they then dominate. And this is where we then have all the problems that we have, whether it be domestic violence, sexual abuse, sexual harassment in the workplace, and mm -hmm. so on. And those are the things which we need eventually to deal with. Yes. Mm -hmm. I agree. I definitely agree. And, yes. you know, especially here in Trinidad and Tobago, we have, just like other Caribbean islands right across the world, we have the issue of domestic violence and, you know, just that right. appreciation for what each person brings to the table. That's but, right. you know, as, as the wife of the prime minister, and he's been, it seems, in public life most of his life, right. have you as a woman suffered any hardship as a result of that? The word hardship... Now, what I would say is, because, for instance, Keith and I got married in 1985. In 1986, he became an opposition senator. And thereafter, he was very much involved in building the party. So a lot of his time was taken up with the PNM, building the PNM. So we went from stage to stage. Yes. So then you go on to opposition leader. Then you become prime minister. So there have been sacrifices, sacrifices um, within the, the household because, of course, he is now serving the country. Yeah. And I appreciate that. And uh, what he is doing is for the future of Trinidad and Tobago, the future of our children, our grandchildren, and everybody else's. Yeah. So that uh, it is something that I accept and uh, we move to suit. Yeah. I fill the role sometimes of father and mother but he always found the time to be there for the girls. We would go on vacations every year, so at least he had special time with yeah. them. Well, was, uh, it, yes. was it difficult for you, though, as a wife? Because it's one thing to accept that, you know, your husband is in the spotlight. He's, mm -hmm. he's serving the population, and as much as you benefit from that as a citizen, but mm -hmm. as a wife, you said there was always sacrifice, so you had That's to give right. up some time. Of course. Yeah. But again, I can't be selfish. 
in serving the country. I appreciate that. You play second fiddle to the country. Yeah. I don't mind playing second <laughs> fiddle to the, the country. Well, I must say, you play the second fiddle very well. I don't hear anybody yeah. complaining. Yeah, you know, so, so that's good. Yes. But, you know, I always uh, wondered what it would be like, you know, having somebody who is in public life. And it now brings you, as his female half, into the spotlight. What has that been like for you? Constantly being in the spotlight because okay. your husband is now the Prime Minister of the Republic of Trinidad okay. and Tobago. So that for a person who was never involved in politics, you know, I went to vote when I um, turned 18 and I would vote thereafter. But uh, politics was not a mainstay in, in, in yeah. my household. So I'm not going to say that I went kicking and screaming into this thing. <laughs> I say I married a geologist. I didn't marry a politician. <laughs> and I then became the wife of a politician, sure. the wife of the opposition leader, the wife of the prime minister. If there is mm -hmm. one thing, what is that one thing that the population doesn't know about Sharon Rowley? Share something with us that we just don't know. I have a purple belt in karate. Ooh. That's right. You know, I used to. <laughs> hey, I and might have to show with some skills around I mean, here. As, as long ago as it is, I remember it very clear, um, clearly. But no, I enjoyed sports at school. Yeah. So I um, would have done athletics. I did long jump. And at that time, I had a long jump record. And I joined, decided I would take up karate. Okay. And I had this feeling of confidence. I would walk through the streets. Nobody could oh. harm me. <laughs> That's what you call it. false. <laughs> a false you know, sense of false security. False sense of security. Yes. But I felt so. I mean, I'm not sure that today I can do the same. Right. Um, because things 50 have changed. years ago, yeah. things have certainly changed. Yeah. But that is one of the things I would say. Oh, yes. so a purple belt. Yes. Do you do you do any of it now still? No, not at all. Not at all. Any physical exercise now? Um. I actually took up golf um, a few years ago, and that was simply because I, I can be competitive. And I found that Keith plays golf. I mean, why can't I play golf too? So I tried to beat him on the, on the field. Well, I didn't really, but what was, I, I did this um, adult clinic, and I got the trophy for the, the best female or something. So he has this cabinet just next to his golf um, clubs and so on. So I put my trophy there so that he will see it each time he passes. And then I got another trophy. So I put it there. So, you know, understand yeah. that there's potential. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> we want to fasten your business a little uh -huh, bit because uh -huh. anytime the prime minister coming to these press conferences, yes. you know, people say, all right, Mrs. Rowley put him in this. This oh. means this is what we're going to get. Going to go, in, go into lockdown? No, things are going to be easy. Do you trust yeah. the prime minister? Not at all. You serious? I must say, Keith likes to shop also, <laughs> so that you well. <laughs> you know you wouldn't think of it. Huh? But if we happen to go abroad and we go into the mall, we say, "Okay, you go there, I go there," and he comes back with almost as many bags <laughs> as I do. Are you believe serious? it or not? He chooses. He he dresses himself, you know, and he heads out. And he's come a long way, you know, I tell him that because when I first met him, you know, he came to visit me and he will say, so did you have to say that? And he came, what I call ban lawn jerseys, you know, they were these stretch jerseys and so on. And he was quite happy in his ban lawn jersey yeah. and his bell bottom denim pants. And you were wondering what's going on with the dress code. But he has improved considerably. <laughs> there you have it. She does not dress the prime minister, but... <laughs> Come a long way from those <laughs> Banlon jerseys. <laughs>